Hello ladies and gentlemen and today we're actually going to be reviewing the smart things hub So you're probably asking yourself why did you switch hubs why you know you sounded all pretty excited about the staples connect hub um, why would you go out and spend money on another hub the main reason actually there's a lot of reasons and I'll kind of go over them as fast as I possibly can they're kind of um, nested <sighs> long story short um, the staples connect hub I'm pretty sure it's going out on a hunch that uh, I think they're going to be um, essentially ceasing development of it. The updates for the Staples Connect Hub, the developers have made it abundantly clear that they're not going to be publicly releasing their API. Smart Things does have an API. I'm a developer, so that's a big thing. Um, based on the things that you can do with it, you know, people think of APIs and and coding things and whatever, and and you have to have you know some crazy you know in depth knowledge about developing and programming and everything else, and it's really not that bad. But what it does, what an API does allow you to do, uh, for the people that don't know, is it allows you to create applications that can integrate directly with your home uh, devices. That's actually a whole separate project. I might actually go over that if people want to hear about it or not. They, they're locking at the API. Um, I haven't seen many updates for it, if at all, at this point. You know, I have my own personal rights with it, but the biggest glaring issue is the API. The other glaring issue is going to be the responsiveness of this device. The latency involved with um, pushing a button on the Staples Connect app on my iPhone versus it actually going through and connecting with my lights and everything. Biggest thing with latency for me was sitting in bed, bringing my iPhone out, turning on my bed light, dimming the light, which was great. And from there, you know, turning off the thermostats or at least setting them down all for my bed, which was great. Turning off the other lights, locking my front doors. Um, and it's great. I mean, it does all of that great. What it doesn't do is it doesn't do it cleanly. And what I mean by that is there is a huge delay between tapping the app button, actually logging in, it has to log in twice, which I never understood. It has to go out to the Staples Connect servers, log in, and then it actually logs in with your account. So you can actually, you wait for this little spinning icon to settle itself to finally gain access to your hub. Smart Things Hub, a lot of things I actually like about it. First of all is it actually has batteries in it, uh, double A's, I believe there's four in there. And what that obviously does is it acts as a miniature battery backup in the event of power failure. There has been a couple times where I've just haven't been able to connect to the hub at all. The application is very responsive um, in comparison to the, to the Staples Connect. It's obviously very small. You're not going to have any issues with putting this around other devices. Um, it does get a little warm, um, but by no means is it hot. That's pretty much it. Let's kind of go in the app and I'll kind of go over the features and what I have my house set up to do. Okay, let's fire up the app. And that's pretty much it. Um, for me, it loads that fast. I want to say 9 out of 10 times. Sometimes I do get a twirly loading thing, but it usually loads extremely rapidly. First thing that you see when you log into the Smart, uh, Smart Hub app is all of your devices, or things as they call them. Um, I got my thermostats, my patio lights, down on my Christmas tree, which is a, um, a wall outlet, essentially, and even my desk lamp, which is a GE Wink bulb. And everything down to the dimmer. I'll slide that down and you can see it dims. It's really nice. It's very fast too. So I'll turn that back up. Oops. And obviously you can turn it off. And I have it set to fade turning on and off, which is really great. That's something that the Stables Connect doesn't offer. It doesn't allow you to fade turning on and off the bulbs, um, let alone have this really nice kind of UI to control the bulbs to begin with. While it does connect to them, Smart Hubs totally blows it out of the water in terms of being able to more identify, uh, better identify, I should say, these bulbs and connect with them. Other big great point for this that I love personally for me being a, a hound of data is it logs literally everything. You can find out everything from <laughs> on a device level if you want to go crazy. If you have kids um, and the kid says, hey, I didn't turn on the Christmas tree um, this morning and you want to see if they're lying, you could go down to your Christmas tree go into recently and it will pull up logs of when it turns on and off. The really great thing about this is it also, um, it, it will obviously clearly show you when it goes on, when it goes off based on the time of the day. The biggest part that I love about the Smart Hub is got to be the Smart Apps. If you use them correctly, as in 
they're set automatically you actually making your home automate itself for you you're not going in here and using the app and that's what i've essentially been trying to tell everybody that there's a big difference between home automation and home controlling you know wireless controlling with your phone and i do a mix of both but I, what i feel like and definitely with main media is it's confusing the two as being the same thing and it isn't the wireless controlling is essentially me going in here finding my you know my desk lamp and and controlling it manually you know that's wireless controlling it's very nice you can set this up as like you know maybe if you have like an old iphone or something make a nice little wall um fixture for it and actually turn it into like a tablet for that area or just an area so you can control the whole house from there you can do that that's a nice wireless controlling thing the smart apps of smart hub is really where the automation part starts kicking in uh, for me and it, it was a very big realization of how crazily nested and intricate that this could potentially get if you wanted to go crazy with it <laughs> so diving right into it i think one of the best things that i love is got to be the smart lighting um, they really did think this through the ui of how you set this up from from device device uh, how it goes on how it goes off the conditionals the if and this uh, if thens and else's um, kind of situations with it is a really great way to do it and i feel like this is going to be used with a lot of people that are not technically inclined and it's definitely geared towards that crowd so for perfect example in this i have my back patio light uh, turning on at sunrise which automatically updates um you know based on you know uh, my location and daylight saving time I have it also turning on my Christmas tree at sunset and turning on the front porch light at uh, sunset as well. So they both go on and then turning on and setting the level of my living room floor lamp because it has a GE wink bulb, which it works perfectly with. Um, I'll go over those uh, if people would like to. Um, the Pairing the GE wink bulbs, if it was paired with another hub, was a bit of a pain. Um, so I can't really uh, contest if it was going to be a pain uh, to set it up with just the smart home, it, like as if you, you just bought the bulbs and brought them home and, and essentially paired them up initially. Um, since I was going from the Staples Connect hub to this one, it was a bit of a pain to unpair them from the Staples Connect first and then go through the whole blinking process with the GE bulbs, which is pretty crazy. I can go into that. If you would like me to review the GE bulbs, just give me a shout out in the comments. The other great thing about smart apps is it does have I want to say uh, semi-control over the Amazon Echo and I was very excited to get my Amazon Echo because I thought I was going to be uh, fully uh, integrated with all of my uh, devices in my house including my thermostats. The Amazon Echo however did not detect. There's this whole crazy detection phase that you have to do with your Amazon Echo to identify your list so you can control them with your voice. Um, and I was really excited about this. One of the main reasons why I bought my Echo and I'm actually kind of disappointed that it doesn't it isn't there. Um, they are promising for a lot of software updates, but just like with the Stables Connect, we know that uh, sometimes can go nowhere. So in this list, you have my back patio light all the way down to my living room floor lamp. Um, you can tell Alexa, Amazon Alexa, I know this isn't a, a review of the Echo, um, but since it is related to my home automation and the smart hub of how it integrated, I'll kind of go over the basics of it. But you can tell Amazon Alexa, the living room floor lamp. Um, Alexa, dim living room floor lamp to five, and she'll say, okay, like really awkwardly, but will immediately dim that light to, to 5%. You do the same thing with any of the, the lights, the front door. The other thing you can do with smart apps is you can automate a bunch of things with a tap of a button. Another great thing that I like um, about the smart hub versus uh, the Stables Connect is the fact that you can create very specific um, settings. So a perfect example, if I'm going to bed every single night, I turn my um, my thermostats down to 64, uh, whether it be in the bedroom or wherever else. What we could do is instead of going into the, I'll show you what it looks like before, instead of going into the thermostat manually, going to this screen, taking your bar, dragging it down to where you want, you know, selecting heat or turning it off or whatever, you can create a smart app to automatically do all of that uh, by itself in this little list. So you'd fire up the app, it would go here, tap in smart apps, I can tap that and it'll automatically set my thermostats um, to 64. I have it named uh, 70 degrees, uh, but I recently just changed that to 64 as you can see here. But it's very intuitive. I can create, um, I can add multiple thermostats, as you can see here, first floor, second floor in a bedroom. I can have them all do the same thing if they're gonna be turning off. Um, 
you know, you can set your different modes for it and everything else, away, home, and night, uh, depending on uh, what kind of thing that you want to designate with the apps. Um, I'm not going to go crazily involved with this because it can get very nested. Um, and what I mean by that is the next phase, uh, called routines, I have the bedroom lamp on and off. The reason why I have it as a routine is because the bedroom lamp, um, I want it to be specifically turned on and turned off at a, a dimming level. And I, I love the size of these buttons on the routines rather than going into, um, where is it, smart apps. Made a quick mention about this before, but I love data and Smart Hub does not underperform when it, <laughs> in regards to being able to report of everything, uh, turning on, turning off, setting, uh, whether it be automatic or manually adjusted. Like I said, the difference between manually controlling it um, with your phone or it automatically happening with you know sunrise, sunset. Um, if you have different sensors, you can set up conditionals. So you know if it's 70 degrees out, turn off the you know heater in the in the patio. I mean, I have a, I have no idea. You can you get the gist. The great thing about this is, like I said before, you can find out um, when things happen. Um, really cool thing is it kind of bridges out of just the home automation switches and it integrates your phone directly. Um, Brian's iPhone has arrived home. You can set that up as a conditional. So when I set, when I come home, what I have it uh, set as is I, you know, come home into my car, whatever, automatically turns on the front light porch, unlocks the front door, and turns the um, living room floor lamp to 5% and sets the thermostats. It's like unbelievable. I don't even think about it anymore, you know? And the greatest thing was is going on top of that is I've actually been able to track and report the amount of energy savings and I'm down by like 23% because of this automation, you know, whether it be forgetting to turn off light bulbs. It doesn't really matter for me because all of my light bulbs are, you know, either <laughs> G Wink uh, LEDs or Cree um, LED bulbs. But going that extra mile uh, and, and essentially automating this so that, you know, you don't forget, uh, you know, to turn things off or turn them on or... Um, you know, if, if you're leaving for work um, and you want to have automatic things happen, perfect example is if you have like a slow cooker and you want to, you know, start slow cooking something that you set up before work, they do make Z-Wave control slow cookers, but I thought it was kind of uh, funny. If you got an old manual slow cooker, what I found out to do is just get a Z-Wave switch, throw it on the switch, set your slow cooker, and then you can actually go in here and then turn it on uh, remotely. And it's brilliant. <laughs> it's really great. Wife loves it. The marketplace is a little bit different. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do um, with the smart apps, um, setting you know climate controls, health and fitness, and everything else, depending on uh, what you want to do. I thought a very different approach, a very uh, smart approach that they're that they're doing is elder care. I thought this was brilliant, um, and you can obviously read all through this uh, if you have a smart home hub. But just to give you an example, um, I'm in the marketplace right now in the application and underneath smart apps you can actually set up a lot of predefined things depending on what you want to do. Um, presence modes like like I was saying before, if I came home, you know, turning on the lights, unlocking the front door, uh, music and sounds, you can actually uh, control your Sonos. For whatever reason, I can't control my um, Alexa application through the Smart Hub app. I'm kind of bummed about that because it would be great to just have like some crazy jazz music play in the mornings <laughs> by itself. Uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. Lastly, we have the Smart Home Monitor. Now, this is Smart Hub's attack or plan of action of you know monitoring uh, you know your your house as an alarm system. You can set up sirens, Z-Wave sirens, to automatically go off depending on you know if windows are open and closed and you're not there. Like I said, there's a lot of conditionals here, and just to give you a couple ideas, only when you're home. Um, you can have it, you know, disable your security, whatever else. If you invoke the I'm going to bed activity, you can engage it and automatically uh, do the routing. There is some elbow grease involved here. I mean, you're going to be sitting down and thinking this uh, out. Um, probably the best way to do that is to, um, you know, just get a pen and paper and, and map it out uh, in your head of how, you know, if the front door locks at night when I invoke the bed, um, uh, you know, or, or, or a window opens at night and I'm already in bed because I've invoked the bed thing, um, you know, alarm the siren or, you know, bounce me a notification or, you know, X, Y, Z, you can fill in the blanks. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am very happy with the Smart Hub. 
I think it's backed um, clearly by Samsung. They got some money if they're throwing at it. They're doing a lot of updates. They're taking it seriously. Fortunately for the Stables Connect, I, w I loved the Stables Connect uh, when it came out. It was my first hub, so obviously I was pretty married to it. Did a lot of research with it. Um, read a lot of really great reviews about it as well, but nobody really went through it uh, and took the time to, to give you a, uh, a, um, a video review. And that's essentially what I'm doing here with the Smart Hub versus the Stable Connect. I'm trying to, to review them both after having used them for uh, you know months on end already. Hope you liked it. If you liked it, subscribe, like it, comment below. If you want me to kind of go over any part of this, just let me know in the comments and I'll take the time and, and reply to you. Anyway, toodles.